And this edition of the 46th Game of the Week being brought to you in part by the St. Joseph County Police Department. Join the team and help protect and serve our community. Welcome back to the Viking Gym and Niles as we get you ready for Lakeshore and Niles tonight. Time now to look at our keys to win for tonight's game. When you start with Lakeshore Lancers, you have to begin with Jack Carlisle. The 6'2 senior is their leading scorer, averaging a little under 16 points with four rebounds a game. He scored 20 points in the win over Niles last season, and he'll need some help from his buddy Cohen Hurdle, another 6'2 senior on the squad. Hurdle, a three-sport athlete, he was an all-conference defensive back in football, pretty good basketball player too, as he's averaging nine points in a game and is their most prolific three-point shooter. The keys to win for the veteran Sean Schrader of the Lancers. They got to be more efficient on offense. They've just been inconsistent in that area so far this year. They got to lock up on defense on those Niles key players that Chuck will talk about in a moment. And they got to keep Niles off the defensive boards. They sometimes are inconsistent in their shooting, so they need those second chance opportunities on the offensive boards. Here's the veteran head coach of the Lakeshore Lancers, Sean Schrader, on his team's one and four season thus far. Well, um, you know, we've had some um, had some good moments. We've had some inconsistent moments. So that's kind of where we've been so far this year. We've had some uh, really good quarters, played a really pretty good game against St. Joe overall. And then every other game we've had um, a quarter or maybe 10 minute period where we just haven't played very well. That's cost us in those games. The basketball coaches in the state of Michigan believe that the Niles point guard is one of the top 50 players in the state. We're talking about Mike Phillips Jr., the 5'10 senior guard, who's averaging a little under 16 points a game himself. Terrific free throw shooter. He had a terrific district tournament last year after an all-conference season, and he's probably headed for more all-conference honors this year. And he's getting help from Ethan Chambliss, who has literally been a walking double-double. A 6'6 senior, averaging 11 points and 10 rebounds a game, and headed to Notre Dame, not to play basketball, but to study to become an orthopedic surgeon. The keys to win for Miles Busby and the Vikings. They need a championship effort. He feels his team's good, his players know they're good, but they gotta play at the highest level to achieve greatness. They gotta work inside out on offense, get the ball into Chambliss, and then work it out to Phillips, and then 32 full minutes of defense. Don't give Lakeshore's inconsistent offense a chance to get into rhythm. Miles hasn't played in a while either, has Lakeshore for that matter, but here's Miles Bus Busby on whether or not his team's gonna be rusty or rested here tonight. Well, I think that for us, we had a really good uh, streak of practices during the break. So I think that there'll, there'll naturally be some, some rust. Um, but I think that our guys, from a leadership standpoint, with Mike and Ethan and Brayden, we have a great group of kids who communicate well to each other and can challenge each other. So that way, if there is some signs of rusty, we can fight through it and work together to, to shake those off and play a good st uh, style of basketball tonight. They pride themselves on Niles Noise here in the Viking Gym. We'll see how much they're able to make tonight as their rivals, the Lancers, are here in town. It's Lakeshore and Niles. We've got the starting lineups and opening tip next on 46.
This edition of the 46 Game of the Week being brought to you in part by Tire Rack. TireRack.com is the way tire buying should be. Ready for the starting lineups, here's Angelo DiCarlo. Lakeshore will start six foot junior forward Lane Fry making his first start. Jack Carlisle, 6'2", senior point guard. He's the only returning starter from a year ago. Scored 20 in the game against Niles one season ago. Cohen Hurdle, 6'2", senior, nine points and three rebounds per game. Luke Kane, a 6'3", junior, 3.5 rebounds per game. A very good offensive rebounder for the Lakeshore Lancers. And Alex Toothman, a 6'4", junior forward, 5.4 points, 5.6 rebounds per game, and a team best, 10 assists on the season. For the Niles Vikings, Braden Favors is a 6'3 sophomore, second on the team in scoring at 12 points per game. Brendan Olson is a 6'5 sophomore forward, 10 points per game. You might remember him as the wide receiver from the football team. Mike Phillips Jr. is a 5'10 senior guard, 15.5 points, four assists, and two steals per game. Donovan Williams is a 6'7 freshman center, averaging one point per game. And Ethan Chambliss, a 6'6 senior forward. Chuck mentioned he's a double-double machine. 11 points, 10 rebounds per game, also averaging two blocks per contest. I love the irony that they play the music from the Alan Parsons Project, which was used by the Bulls well before any of these kids were born. <laughs> Here are your officials for the Knights game. Larry Brewer working with Lauren Johnson and Randy Melvin. And the MHSAA is no different than the IHSAA. They've got an official shortage too, and they're looking for more people to join the ranks of officials. So make sure you contact your local officials association. Lakeshore in the red, Niles in the white. Not a bad crowd on hand considering school hasn't started back up yet here in the city of Four Flags. And we're just about ready for action. So glad you've joined us for action here in 2024 on TV 46. Luke Hine will jump for Lakeshore against Brendan Olson for Niles. And Olsen wins the tip for the Niles Vikings, who are 6-2 and two on the year. Their losses to Brandywine and Clay, their best win over Otsego. Their last time out, they struggled but beat Pawpaw 58-55 right before Christmas. Mike Phillips Jr. dishes it off. This is Brendan Olsen, a little 10-footer in the lane, rims out. The rebound put up and in by Ethan Chambliss. And we talked about the double-double that he is. He shows it on the offensive glass. Lakeshore is 1-4 and four on the season. Their only win came in game two as Alex Toothman has a three rattle out and the rebound to Braden Favors. Phillips Jr. at the other end contorts his body for a nice basket. And Mike Phillips Jr. is on the board as well. It's 4-0 Vikings. Yeah, and you saw the speed immediately there from Phillips Jr. being able to accelerate into the open floor and get that basket. Jack Carlisle, the point guard. Now Lane Fry, as Ange mentioned, his first start. Sean Schrader has a rule, you miss practice, you don't start. So even though a couple of guys had told him, look, we're going to be away for a couple of days in the holidays, that's fine. You'll, you'll play, you're just not going to start tonight. And yeah, we'll see a couple of those guys probably pretty early on here in this contest, but a couple of other guys getting the start here for the Lancers. Toothman, the big offensive lineman from the football team, thought about hoisting another three. Instead, Cohen Hurdle does that and comes up short, and it's Olsen with the rebound for Niles, who has dominated the glass in the early going. Mike Phillips Jr. into the lane. He got tripped up by Hurdle. Niles Community Schools inspires and prepares all learners through diverse opportunities to challenge and present and enrich the future. Niles Community Schools understands that children learn in different ways and at different paces and a vital partnership between staff, parents, and community leaders is needed for the success of all learners. This has been a Niles team that has thrived on quick starts. So far this season, they appear to be off to another one tonight as Phillips Jr. short on the three, and the rebound comes to the floor where it's collected by Carlisle. And not Lakeshore in transition, but Carlisle missed the layup, and Chambliss hauls down another carol. At the other end, Braden Favors for three. Yes, sir. So Brandon Favors knocks down the three. And it's 7-0 Niles, and Favors tips that one away as well before stepping on the sideline. Tough start here for Lakeshore. Obviously, this is the one Miles Busby would like to see, and it's working out well for his squad early on. 
But for Lakeshore, when you're one and four, even if you feel like you have the team that can get there by the end of the year, you can't you can't get down too much too early, Chuck. Otherwise, you're going to lose that confidence pretty quickly. Kind of feel like this is a key possession right here for Lakeshore early on. Down 7 nothing. Needs something to go well. They've had a couple of good looks, haven't converted them. Here's another good look, and the three misfired by Luke Hine. Niles coming the other way, favors another three. That's too strong, but it's knocked out of bounds by Lakeshore. It'll stay with Niles. Interestingly, despite the 7-0 lead, neither team has turned the ball over. Almost had a turnover there, but uh, early on, but you know, he was in Niles wasn't able to hold on to the possession uh, a couple of possessions back. So that's not been the reason why Lakeshore is down. He's just not able to make shots here. Phillips Jr. thwarted by Hurdle, goes in strong and gives it off to Donovan Williams. And the freshman gets his first basket of the game. He's only averaging one point per contest. So a 9-0 Niles lead early on. Toothman nearly threw that one away. Carlisle barks out the signals. Olsen guarding Carlisle. Carlisle off the screen, drains the 15-footer, and finally the Lancers get on the board after a one of six start. <laughs> you don't want to say uh, something's a must shot just three minutes into a game, but that felt about as big as any that you're going to see here tonight because you can't you can't win if you don't make shots and they hadn't made one to that point. Meanwhile, Phillips Jr. has continued to get great penetration short on that shot though and Hurdle is able to corral the rebound for Lakeshore. And another three on the way and the Lancers misfire again from Fry. Here comes Niles the other way. Lakeshore has sent its two usual starters to the table now they'll be checking in at the next dead ball. Olsen misses a three and here comes Lakeshore now. As you might expect after a couple of weeks of not playing the shooting not as pretty as either team would like it in the early going. We'll see if the rush shakes off a little bit later. Carlisle for three. That's too strong. Here comes Phillips Jr. in transition. Knocked away though, nice defense, and then a foul called on Favors. Zach Ort and Spencer Goslin checking into the game, both seniors. Goslin 6'9", forward averaging 7.6 points and 6.6 .6 rebounds per game. Ort 5.8 points, 5.6 rebounds per game. So now you'll see if Lakeshore has weathered the storm and with these two regulars back in, if the offense has a little more spark to it. Carlisle wanted to go back door to Goslin. Instead, it's Ort corralling the pass. Toothman with a little shake and bake move, and he walked. Ender's Auto Repair on Red Arrow Highway. Cheers for the Lancers. Have a great season with over 30 years' experience. Ender's Auto Repair is your full service shop for all your repair needs. Saw Miles Busby there on the sideline, a 2012 Niles grad who played college basketball at Chadron State in Nebraska. Was an assistant coach for three years and then took over as an interim coach in 2021. Niles with a misfire from Darius Johnson the third, but the rebound put up and in by favors. And a timeout called by Sean Schrader and the Lancers. It's sponsored by Lakeshore Athletics. Three minutes exactly to go in the first, and Niles off to an 11-2 start on 46. This edition of the 46 Game of the Week being brought to you in part by Raising Cane's. Craveable chicken finger meals. One one. As you look at Miles Busby there on the bench. And as Anj mentioned in the open, Coach Busby, a winner at both the playing and coaching level. He won a district championship as a player in 2012. And then last year, they shocked the world with the win over Fenton Harbor in the district championship game to take the title back here at Niles.
And it's a great achievement for someone to win as both a player and a coach at their alma mater. He's not very old, but he's a 40 under 40 guy. And you can see why, right? He's a charismatic young man. Uh, I enjoyed covering him when he was a player in high school and has done an outstanding job here early on as a coach. And if you missed it on social media, he really talked about using basketball as an instrument to teach life lessons to his players that he hopes he takes they take with them off the floor doesn't mean he doesn't want to win oh he's competitive but he wants them to grow into being good leaders and he really sees himself as a mentor for these young people here in Nile. and a blocking foul and illegal screen set that time by Spencer Gosling this game's health tip is brought to you by Health Link. Taking care of your mental health is important as your physical health. Schedule a checkup at Health Link today. Health Link offers medical, dental, vision, behavioral health, and more. Lakeshore just one of eight from the field so far. And Niles has been cleaning the glass on them. Now, this is Olsen up top. Chambliss looking for some help as he works against Gosling. And then the point guard, Mike Phillips Jr. going to the baseline, fades, fires, can't get it to go. Chambliss with the tip in. That's a really tough shot for Phillips over a guy that's a foot taller than him. And then Chambliss cleans it up and gets the bucket. Nice pass from Toothman down to Goslin down on the block. And the big fella puts it in for his first basket of the night. Spencer averaging eight points a contest. One of the things Lakeshore was missing in the early moments when Spencer wasn't in the game was the ability to get the ball inside, and there you see they're able to do so. Phillips, now they work at the favors for three. Couldn't get it to go, and Toothman gets the rebound. Neither team really effective from long distance in the early going. Toothman wanted to go to Goslin, but he threw the pass too far. We'd like to thank Wings Etc. and Niles for providing dinner for the production crew here tonight. Wings Etc. is the place to go to watch any big games with friends while eating delicious food. Wings Etc. and Niles is delighted to support high school football and youth athletic programs in our community. Donovan Williams checks back in for Niles to take the place of Chambliss and give him a little bit of a rest. It's a very short bench for the Vikings. Phillips. And now favors for three. That one rimmed out as well, and then Phillips went over the back needlessly. The Lakeshore Basketball Boosters and Lakeshore Athletic Department thanks everyone who contributed to the Lakeshore basketball season. Thank you for your tremendous support. Good luck and go Lancers. And we wish the players a great year, especially our seniors. Niles only shooting 40%, but they're going to try to ramp up their offense with some three-quarter court pressure here. A little one-two-two zone press. Owen Timmons in the game now for Lakeshore. He wears number three, has it up top. Under a minute to go on the tire rack scoreboard. You see the clock right hand corner of your screen. So in Lake, hurdle. Let's see if Lakeshore can get the ball inside. They do there. Man, can't get it to drop, but they get the foul. Carlisle will go to the line and shoot two shots after he is fouled. They're going to call that one on Darius Johnson, the third. And Jack Carlisle, who is a 73% foul shooter, goes to the strike. Imagineering Finishing Technologies in South Bend is globally known as the knowledge source for metal finishing solutions like the teams in this game. Imagineering is always working towards a great finish. Thank you, Imagineering, for your continued support of high school sports on TV 46. Carlisle, a 6'2 senior, averaged 17 and a half last season. He has four here tonight as the Lancers get back to within seven. We'll hear from him coming up at halftime as our 46th Student Athlete of the Week presented by Tony Letcher of Health Markets. Phillips handles it outside. Favors on the baseline. Goes in with the right hand, couldn't hit. Here comes Lakeshore the other way. Cohen Hurdle. Goslin went inside out, but Ort couldn't handle the pass. Lakeshore wants to hold for one. Carlisle checked the clock, drove the baseline, and scored. He's been as advertised with six here in the first quarter. Phillips' three-quarter court shot way too high. 
and a strong quarter for the Niles Vikings as Braden Favors came out firing. He had five points of the stanza. Lakeshore tried to get back after a 9-0 start. Jack Carlisle with six of his own, but it's Niles leading 13-8 after one on 46. And this edition of the 46th Game of the Week being brought to you in part by Bill's Heating, keeping families and businesses comfortable since 1951. They sponsor our sideline reports. Bo Hunt back with us. Your thoughts on this one through the first eight minutes? Well, I think the biggest thing was this could have got out of hand pretty quickly, but I believe Lakeshore really settled down and really got back in this game because they used ball control. They really worked for good shots. Now, Granted, neither team shot very well in that first quarter like we talked about, but I think a lot of it was because the Vikings defense, that's the most impressive thing out here that I've seen in that first quarter was their ability to get after it on the defensive side of the ball. Guys? Niles shot 38%, Lakeshore shot 30%. How much of that is Christmas rust? Well, I think for Lakeshore, a lot of it was didn't have all your starters in at the start of the gate, as we mentioned at the top. That guy right there, Zach Ort, not playing to start because, you know, he was on vacation and, and he doesn't get to start as a result. Once the usual starters are back in the game, here they come. They rally back in. And they get the first possession of the second quarter with Owen Timmons, the 5'11 junior, three-sport athlete up top. Here's Carlisle working his way into the paint and fouled from behind by Brendan Olson. Ben Soft Pretzels has been sporting high school athletics since 2008. They believe that sports are an important part of a well-rounded education and we're proud to support the next generation of athletes. Find Ben Soft Pretzels at the University Park Mall or at most major Notre Dame athletic events. Have a pretzel day. Coming into the game tonight, Jack Carlisle had been to the line almost as much as his teammates. He has now had three free throws tonight. So add three to the number you're about to see as Ethan Chambliss checks back in. And Carlisle has actually been to the line now more than the rest of the team. <laughs> 52 to 50 in terms of free throws. And that bodes well for Lakeshore when he gets there. 4-4 four, four tonight, 74% shooter on the year. That is one of the stranger stats you're going to see. But it works out well, especially when it's your best player that's finding himself getting to the line. Favors. Gets it down in the corner to Johnson, and he stepped on the baseline. Second turnover of the game for Niles. Lakeshore has three. This was, what, 11-2 at one point for Niles, and now Lakeshore has an opportunity potentially to tie if they can get a three-pointer on this possession. They break the press, Ooh. and a foul called on Mike Phillips, Jr., and that's his second. And this is an interesting one because you want Mike Phillips to have his second foul, but this is probably easy points if they don't call the foul. But at the same time, I think you take the long game and get Phillips into foul trouble if you're a Lakeshore. Well, absolutely, because he comes out, and now that bench goes to Logan Olson to the point guard, and Olson not nearly the score that Phillips is. Inside to Spencer Goslin, outside to Owen Timmons. Goslin high post, whips it down low to Ort, who puts it off the glass, no good. Goslin with a one-hand rebound, lost it on the way up. Great battle inside between Chambliss and Goslin, two tall guys, but two skinny guys on the inside. Here, as you take a look at this one, he goes up, gets the rebound, looks like he's got a great effort to somehow get through here, and then Chambliss and a teammate actually able to knock the ball out of his hands. Nice catch by Hurdle. We mentioned the all-conference defensive back from the football team, so typically you expect those guys to have good hands. Carlisle right down to Ord at the high post. Oh, or saw Goslin just a little bit too late in the long arms of the Niles defense creating havoc. Vikings have been stuck on 13 for a while. Yet to score in the first 
oh, say 100 seconds of the second quarter. And now with their point guard out, who's going to run things? Favors the sophomore comes across. Olsen trying to go one-on-one -on -one against Ort and went over him but missed, and Ort gets the rebound. Back the other way, Olsen with a deflection to force Lakeshore to inbound it. St. Joseph County Police Department is here to protect and serve our community, and they're looking for more people to join their team. Employment opportunities for high school graduates are available, and they offer outstanding benefits in a true family environment on their team. Learn more at sjcindiana.com slash employment. Hurdle. Working against a 2-3 zone here by the Vikings, and Goslin had it rejected by Chambliss. Battle for the loose ball. Ork has it knocked out of bounds. Take a look at the replay here as we remain at a standstill at 13-10. Chambliss averaging two blocks per game, showing his presence on the inside. He's our 46th student athlete of the week, back during football season. Logan Olson with the steal, and he drew the contact from Cohen Hurdle, and that's the second on Hurdle. You'll see it again on our 46 replay. Olson intercepting the inbound pass and then inviting the contact. It's probably a foul you wish you had back because you don't want Hurdle to get into that type of foul trouble and now a timeout on the floor. 5.36 to go, first half. Niles by a field goal, 13-10 on 46. This edition of the 46th Game of the Week being brought to you in part by Imagineering Finishing Technologies, IFT, where quality is a way of life. We start to ramp up the schedule with more games next week on TV 46. We'll start you off with Warsaw and Penn. Boy, that should be an interesting <laughs> one at the Palace. We'll show it to you on the live stream Tuesday night, show it Wednesday night at 9, Thursday afternoon at 2 on TV 46. And then right after that, Friday night, ooh, in the NLC, Northridge playing as well as anybody in northern Indiana right now, but they have to go to Northwood. And here's one thing we know, they don't like each other. We'll have it for you Friday night at 11 and Saturday morning at 9 on TV 46. Really? They, <laughs> You've noticed? Yeah, just, just a tad. Northwood, of course, the defending state champions, but figuring things out after losing a couple key players from a year ago. Still a very talented team, but there's been that adjustment period earlier in the year. They've won seven of their last eight, had a handful of a game tonight down at the Hardwood Teepee facing Wawasee. Here's Logan Olson at the line for Niles, and that's his first point of the season for the 5'10 senior, who is a three-sport athlete. He is also a member of the football and baseball teams here at Niles. That's the first point of the second quarter for the Vikings. And he missed that one off the side. So here comes Lakeshore trailing by four. And stepping into the three is Zach Ort, but they still can't hit one, although Olsen lost the rebound out of bounds. Time for new tires. Go to TireAct.com and try their easy-to-use tire decision guide to get personalized tire recommendation. They sell only the best brands, backed by test results, consumer ratings, and customer reviews. TireAct.com, the way tire buying should be. Good time to get those tires before the winter really comes a-coming. Bohan, I want your opinion on this because Miles Busby rolling the dice. He just put Mike Phillips Jr. back in the game. What do you think of the move? Well, I think one of the biggest things is he's one of the top 50 players in the state. He needs to go in there and understand that he uh, understands his game and trust that he's not going to get his third foul here in the first half. And, of course, playing a, a zone defense right now, it might be a little easier to protect him from those fouls. Hard part is he feels like he's an aggressive player. He so is. It, it changes his game to have to settle down. But as Bo said, that's, a, that's part of the game he's got to learn to play at the next level. Ort kicks it outside to Owen Timmons. Good defensive set. Carlisle misfired, and the rebound taken by Favors. Niles wants to run. Favors all the way to the hole for two. Great Favors is a very talented player. 
uh, as just a sophomore looking really good early on. Oh, Chambliss called for the foul when he got the block against Ort. Let's take a look at the replay of that last bucket, the first field goal of the second quarter for the Niles Vikings as Fares goes inside and now has seven points on the evening. Zach Ort goes to the line where he is only a 36% free throw shooter this year. He was an all Southwest Michigan Athletic Conference football player and he gets his first point of the night. The 6'3 junior averaging about six points a game. Zach, a bright young man, was academic All-State on the gridiron this year. And he drains both free throws. Lakeshore hanging in there with those charity tosses tonight. Niles has yet to hit a free throw here this evening, while six have been made by the Lancers. Favors, travel. Turnover, turnover number three for Niles here in the first half. Meanwhile, Lakeshore has five so far. It's about the range that Sean Schrader's team has been in. In fact, a little bit better. They're averaging 15 turnovers a game. Carlisle in the corner for three. Uh, it's off the line, but Ort with a big offensive rebound. That's a good part of his game. And then a held ball. And let's see where the possession arrow goes. It goes to Niles. 0 for 7 so far for the Lancers from three-point range. That's not going to do the favors of the Lakeshore Basketball Boosters, who are the sponsor no. for Lakeshore three-pointers here tonight. Logan Olson outside to Phillips. Timmons tries to guard Ooh. him. Phillips working his way through traffic and gets the bucket. But he did a great job working his way through traffic. He got lucky they didn't give him on an offensive foul on the push off before he went through that traffic. That would have been his third foul otherwise. Gosselin turns and scores with the right hand. And big Spencer Gosselin now with four. By the way, if you're wondering about Spencer Gosselin, why doesn't he get in the weight room, put in a little more weight? He is their hardest worker in the weight room, I'm told. It's just he has that frame that doesn't necessarily put on the weight that you'll necessarily see, but I'm told he is one of the hardest workers that exists in the entire school in the weight room. Some people have that metabolism. It's not one I'm familiar with. <laughs> and a turnover by Niles gives Lakeshore an opportunity to chisel away at this lead. I mean, I don't even know what the weight room is or where it's located, so... <laughs> That's why we're up here. Among many reasons. <laughs> 2.50 to go first half. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, our St. Joe County Police Department halftime report. Scores, highlights, and our Tony Letcher Health Market student athletes. Another Lakeshore turnover. Phillips will turn it in to points and the bucket on the bump. I think we're seeing why he's back in the game with two fouls. As we take a look at the replay here on 46. As Phillips Jr. goes inside off the high glass and the fast. Mike Phillips Jr., an 85% free throw shooter on the year. His dad played here at Niles. Miles Busby said this is a young man that can score at all three levels. We've seen him drive to the basket. He's got a nice mid-range game, and he can hit the three as well. Missed the free throw, though. Niles now just one of three at the line here in the first half. Timmons to Goslin, Carlisle through the lane, was bumped by Chambliss, and he'll go to the line for two more. And Ethan Chambliss picking up the foul, as you'll see again on the 46 Sports Replay. Two fouls now on Chambliss, Anj. Well, now you get your two best players with two fouls here, and they're going to keep Chambliss in the game. And Carlisle continues to just be straight money at the foul line. They'll take Phillips Jr. now out. Got a lot out of him when they put him back in. And they'll preserve him a little bit. And they're going to hope that Chambliss, ranked number four in the senior class at Niles, is smart enough not to pick up foul number three. He is a bright young man, but might have to fight the instincts a little bit. 20 to 16. Niles 
holding on to a four-point lead. Favors works his way and cuts it to the corner. Logan Olson a three. How about that for the senior? Olson with his first three of the season. That is a big basket for Niles. Well, you think for Lakeshore, they've really cut down the lead, and all of a sudden now it's back to seven. Ball and safe, but in the hands of Phillip, or excuse me, Johnson. Favors pull up jumper is off. Chambliss had the rebound knocked out of bounds. It'll be Niles' ball. By the way, you talk, we talk about instincts. Chambliss is still going all out out there right now. He was lucky he did not commit a foul, but very lucky on the defensive end that he didn't. Now Niles with a chance to get the lead back up to nine. Favors tries to work the baseline. Carlisle did a good job of cutting him off. Olsen nearly traveled. Miles Busby calls out a different play. Olsen into the lane. Couldn't get the jackknife jumper, but he gets his own rebound and puts it in. That's one when they look at Phil that is going to bother Sh Coach Schrader that they were not able to have three guys there for the rebound and not able to pull it down. So the Olsen brothers are percolating here in the second quarter, and we've got a whistle and a timeout called because Alex Toothman has his shoes untied. Very kind of the official to do that for Alex. <laughs> Big possession here for Lakeshore. Now suddenly the lead back to nine, where, which is how it started the game. They really chipped away at it, got it down, and last thing you want is is for it to be that big of a deficit going into halftime. But you certainly don't want to have a bad shot here and give Niles an opportunity to make it a double-digit lead. Olsen went for the steal, came up empty. Ort walked. Body got a little out of control, and now they'll put Mike Phillips Jr. back in the game for the last 52 and a half. And you wonder if Mike Miles Busby might just try to hold for one shot here. Yeah, probably figure put him in on the offensive end. Don't risk getting the defensive foul. And and feel confident that hopefully he won't commit an offensive foul here. And if you can hold it and he gets the last shot attempt and you go in by maybe 11 points at the half. Favors gets it back to Phillips. Showing the handles, couldn't hit the shot. And the rebound to Toothman for Lakeshore. Whether or not Coach Busby wanted to play for the final, final shot, his point guard certainly wasn't playing to do that. So now Lakeshore can maybe hold for the last shot here and cut into this Viking lead. Oh, they lose the handle, though. Two on one for Niles coming the other way. Johnson also lost the handle. Knocked out of bounds by Lakeshore, though, so Niles will have 10.6 to get a shot off, and Miles Busby wants to take a timeout here. We'll keep it right here. Meanwhile, we told you coming in, Niles showing some winning ways early on. They are 6-2 and two on the season, but they are 5-0 and oh in the Wolverine Conference, and they have a big showdown a week from tonight as Edwardsburg comes here to the Viking gym. The Eddies playing better ball now that the season gets going. Otsego, a team to keep an eye on, too, in the Wolverine Conference, but could well be the two teams from our viewing area, Niles and Edwardsburg, battling it out for the league title. Yeah, now in the Wolverine Conference for Niles, and for those from watching from Indiana going, wait, didn't they used to be in the same conference as Lakeshore? They made that switch, and really an opportunity here to go after a conference championship, but you know, they got that rivalry with Edwardsburg that has happened over the years in football as well, and that should be a great matchup next week. Favors lost the ball going up. It was knocked away by Owen Timmons. Good clean block there by Timmons. In fact, you mentioned the conferences. Now it's Lakeshore who's making noise about wanting to get out of the Southwest Michigan Conference. Oh, they've, they've suddenly become one of the smallest teams in that conference. In terms of enrollment, yes. Favors will handle it up top. Brendan Olson. And the three on the way. Oh, Johnson Jr. Darius Johnson, the third with a three-pointer. And the Niles Vikings will take their biggest lead in the locker room, 28-16 at the intermission. And we'll go downstairs to Bull Hunt for Bill's heating courtside report. 
once he can corral Miles Busby here as the Vikings head to the locker room. Go ahead, Bo. <laughs> yeah, he's still finishing up talking to his coaches, but Miles, you guys get off to a great fast start, able to persevere really in that second quarter, but then you go into half up by 12. What kind of performance do you, do you feel your kids did? Well, we're, we're laughing because Darius Johnson hit that big shot. And we're happy to see him have confidence because he struggled, kind of been up and down. Uh, but we have confidence in all of our kids. So we celebrate their successes and we uh, stick with them even when they're struggling. So uh, good half of basketball. We got everything that we expected from them, which was a tough effort from a well-coached team. Hey, Miles, I appreciate your time. Thank you, appreciate it. Back to you guys. All right, Bo, everybody stick around. Our Tony Letcher Health Market student athletes are next. Niles leads Lakeshore 28-16 at halftime. Time now for our 46 student athletes of the week presented by Tony Letcher of Health Markets. We have Emerson Garrard, a Niles senior, along with Jack Carlisle, a Lakeshore senior. Both are ranked in the top 10 of the class, both looking to attend either Michigan or Michigan State. We'll start with Jack, who is a member of the basketball team, plays golf, and is ranked seventh in the senior class here at Lakeshore High School. How do you pull it off? How do you balance both athletics and academics? You know, it's really just about making sure you get your schoolwork done because it's a lot easier when you get your schoolwork done in school or you make it, you have a schedule so you get it done at home and then you can worry about basketball or golf or whatever it is because it's tough when you're worrying about both of them at the same time. Tell us a little bit about the future. You're uh, looking to major in engineering. At one point you thought finance, but now engineering. Why engineering? Well, I've always had a math brain. My dad's an engineer, so I initially thought engineering and then I kind of switched over to finance my junior year and now I take AP Physics this year, so and I'm really enjoying it, and I'm really good at it, so I'm kind of thinking engineering again. How has Lakeshore prepared you and made you the person you are today? It's everything from the teachers, my friends, the community. The community is so like welcoming, and they always show crazy amounts of support, and same with the teachers and friends and my teammates and just everything. It's prepared me very well for my future. Jack, thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Emerson Garrard also ranked in the top 10 in her class. She's ranked sixth. She's a member of the volleyball and softball team. How do you pull it all off? Oh, it is not an easy task <laughs> at all, but all four years I really got better at it. I mean, junior year I spent <laughs> lunchtime with Ethan Chambliss, who's playing basketball today, and we would just study, do flashcards. I mean, it's really finding that balance and sacrificing your social life for really education. All right, your state qualifier in Business Professionals of America. Tell us a little bit about that and how that's influenced your decision to want to major in finance in college. Oh, it's I love the BPA, really. It's kind of similar to HOSA, which is really important in uh, Lakeshore. And it's just, it focuses on the business aspects of a club, and I really enjoy it. And so that gave me passion for to further a career in finance. All right, uh, what does being a Niles Viking mean to you? Oh, the sense of community. I truly love Niles with my whole entire heart. I mean, I met my greatest friends here, lifelong friends. Teachers are amazing. The support system is great, and it really prepares me to be a better college, college athlete for many people and better college student in the future. Emerson, thank you very much. Congratulations. Jack, congratulations. Jack Carlisle, Emerson Garrard, our student athletes of the week, presented by Tony Letcher of Health Markets. We have your first half stats and highlights right after this. You're watching the TV 46 Game of the Week.
This edition of the 46th Game of the Week being brought to you by the Electrical Workers of Local 153. They're making our communities brighter. The St. Joe County Police Halftime Report shows that Niles leads Lakeshore by a count of 28-16. Welcome back in. Chuck Freeby and Angelo DiCarlo high above the fray. Kind of a back and forth first half. Niles with a great start, great finish. In between, Lakeshore had some good moments. I think it's got to be a very frustrating and maybe demoralizing end to the half for Lakeshore because, as you mentioned, Niles had that great start. They were up 11-2. Lakeshore gets back in it, makes it a one-possession game, and then all of a sudden, boom, Lake, Lakeshore's down by 12, you know? And I, I think for, for Sean Schrader, it's probably a difficult half to be talking to his guys to probably get their spirits back up for the second half. Let's show you how it got to be this way here in Niles tonight because the Vikings came out hitting on all cylinders. Braden Favors with this three-pointer part of a good first quarter for him. Jack Carlisle drained a rare basket for Lakeshore in the first quarter. Mike Phillips Jr. misses, but there's Ethan Chambliss for the tip in. Lakeshore, though, would chisel its way back. Carlisle with a strong move to the basket. He had 10 points in the first half, but Ethan Chambliss holding a block party underneath, not once but twice right there. And then Niles started to take off offensively. Favors with seven points to lead the Vikings in the first half. Look at the nice move here by Phillips. He had six. Lancers would try to hang around. Spencer Gosling got it inside and was able to do a little bit of damage. But Niles had some unsuspecting heroes too, not just Phillips. Logan Olson came off the bench with four. Darius Johnson the third would hit a key three right before the half. All of a sudden, Niles up 12. And a look at the first half stats will make it really clear. You cannot shoot 25%, make 10 turnovers, and expect to be in front. If it wasn't for the free throws, this would be a real blowout right now. Lakeshore 8 of 8 from the free throw line, but the big discrepancy, as Chuck mentioned, 12 made shots for Niles, only 4 for Lakeshore. And then if you look at the very bottom, Lakeshore 10 turnovers, and a lot of those happening in those final minutes of the second quarter when Niles was able to make their big run to go up by 12. We'll see if the Lancers can come back when we do. We're back here at the Viking Gym with Niles leading 28-16 and third quarter action coming your way next on 46. This edition of the TV 46 High School Basketball Game of the Week being brought to you in part by HealthLink, your community health center. So during halftime, Bo Hunt had a chance to sidle up to Sean Schrader, the Lakeshore coach. Bo, what do you have to say? Well, I won't get as loud as he got, so I'm going to keep it nice and mellow. But uh, point blank, he said, we need to make shots. He goes, we're getting our looks, we're running our zone offense, but we're just not running it the way we need to run it. We need to move a little bit better without the ball, and then when we do get the ball, we need to make sure that we're in a triple threat situation where we can shoot, pass, or dribble drive. And I think that's one of the biggest things he talked about was making the shots once they get them as well. He said, we're getting it inside, we're just not knocking it down. We gotta hit shots if we wanna win this game. Guys? Now we've seen Lakeshore trailing Niles earlier. <laughs> in this athletic season and it happened on the football field back in August the TV 46 cameras were there to see Zach Ort make this terrific catch in the end zone Lakeshore then would go for two and convert and the Lancers pulling off a stunning upset of Niles that night at Al Stockman Stadium by a count of 15 to 14 and afterwards the student body so fired up about the comeback their team made they wound up rushing the field. And you know what? It, it was unexpected at the time because Lakeshore had been blown out the week before, and Niles, we saw what they ended up doing going all the way to regionals. So Zach Gordon would love to have that type of moment again here tonight and rally his team back from a 12-point deficit and maybe bookended here in basketball as well. And one thing that has been a problem for this Niles team this year, they have had big first half leads and seen them slip away. They have not been a really strong third or fourth quarter team. And with the limited depth they have, you can understand why that could be a problem. So we'll see how this one plays out over the final 16 minutes. 
And for Sean Trader, his team's been very inconsistent, which I guess now maybe is a good thing because you're hoping the inconsistency goes to a positive in the second half, and they're inconsistently good in the second half versus the way they played in the first half. Lancers start the second half with the basketball. Spencer Goslin up top. There's Cohen Hurdle. Hurdle did not score in that first half. Averages nine points per game. Chambliss able to force the 11th Lakeshore turnover of the night and then in transition is tied up and fouled. I think they'll call it on Zach Ort. Niles Athletics is proud of the accomplishments of their program. Last year, the Niles boys basketball team won the district championship. Girls volleyball won back-to-back -back conference titles. And during football season, Coach Scott Shaw led football all the way to regionals. Go Vikings. So here's Ethan Chambliss, a 52% free throw shooter at the line. And he misses the first. You can't say enough about Chambliss. He qualified for the state in high jump. He is the president of the student body. He's in National Honor Society, student council, and has overcome 40 fractures in his body over the course of his life. And I asked him to clarify that, and he goes, oh yeah, all over the place. Hands, wrist, knee, toes, everywhere. That's why he wants to be an orthopedic, orthopedic surgeon one day. Yeah, but you can't do surgery on yourself. <laughs> Here's Cohen Hurdle around the screen, but Chambliss was able to get a piece of that shot. His third block of the night. Phillips got some room against Hurdle, and then Hurdle recovered well. Reminder, Phillips and Chambliss both playing with two fouls for Niles. But they survived though late stages of the first half with those favors with an awkward shot that wouldn't go. And the rebound comes down to Carlisle and the Lancers. Good defense here by Niles. Bo mentioned that early on at the end of the first quarter. That's continuing throughout. Lakeshore just not able to get anything offensively going here in terms of getting the ball inside. Niles really worked on closeouts a lot during practice on Wednesday. Toothman not able to hit that shot. But there's Gosselin with the rebound and a held ball called. That will go to Niles. Ender's Auto Repair on Red Arrow Highway. Cheers for the Lancers. Have a great season with other 30 years Ender's of experience. Ender's Auto Repair is your full service shop for all your repair needs. Donovan Williams checks back out. Niles going with a little bit smaller lineup tonight. Trying to get the advantage in speed. Johnson feeling it. Darius Johnson the third, the confidence rising with every shot. He now has six. Well, I mentioned maybe demoralizing end of the first half for Lakeshore. It couldn't have been more inspiring for Niles. He hits that shot and he's a program kid, a guy that they want. They really all enjoy being around, and now all of a sudden he's got two threes. Well, he and Olsen have given them 10 points off the bench tonight. And another block by Chambliss. Phillips all the way. And timeout call by Lakeshore. It's sponsored by Lakeshore Athletics. 5.37 to go in the third. And Niles trying to say there will be no comeback tonight. The block party by Chambliss. Phillips by Coastal. Niles in control. And this edition of the 46 game of the week being brought to you by Ben Soft Pretzel serving our community one pretzel at a time. And time for our Ben Soft Pretzel trivia question. In how many final fours has Sean Schrader coached? This is Be a trick, trick question. This is unfair, Choke. Unfair. Not unfair. Well, you got to know multiple states is all I'm going to say. That's your hint, people. Well, for you, that's confusion and what else? Stop. <laughs> 537 to go third quarter Niles up 34 16 right now Lakeshore in a state of desperation as they take the floor trying to figure out how they can get back in this one it was 18 14 Chuck with three minutes left in the first half 
16 two runs tend to be helpful. Over the course of six minutes of game time. Cohen Hurdle passed on the screen, instead went to Carlisle in the corner. Phillips forcing Hurdle to his right. Now Hurdle for three. Bucket oh. and the bump. And it's sponsored by the Lakeshore Basketball Boosters. The first three of the night for the Lakeshore Lancers. And you get another look on the 46 replay. A chance for a four-point play from deep downtown for Hurdle, who gets his first points of the night. Here's someone averaging nine points per game, gets his first points. And maybe that can help Lakeshore get themselves back in this. Still plenty of time. Our last broadcast of the season so far was you know, St. Joe coming back from a 30-point deficit nearly against Riley back in, in the Indiana section. But unbelievable if Lakeshore can come back here tonight. But that's the type of plays you got to make to make it happen. Phillips with that compact frame pinballing off of bodies underneath. And Mike Phillips Jr. will go back to the line. He has eight points tonight. Phillips had 21 in the win over Paw Paw right before Christmas. And hits that one. This game's health tip is brought to you by Health Link. Taking care of your mental health is as important as your physical health. Schedule a checkup at Health Link today. Health Link offers medical, dental, vision, behavioral health, and more. Phillips, one of the leaders on this team. And he drains both free throws, and he'll come out as Logan Olson comes in to give him a little bit of a breather. And full court pressure will be offered by the Vikings here. Phillips now hitting double figures on the night with 10. Four Niles players averaging 10 points per game. Hurdle at the other end with a good catch and hits over Olsen. All of a sudden, Cohen Hurdle with a five point spurt here for Lakeshore. Now they got to get it going on the defensive end. That will help them as Olsen is called for steps. Big thank you to Wings Etc. and Niles for providing dinner for our crew this evening. Wings Etc. is the place to go to watch any big game with your friends while eating delicious food. Wings Etc. and Niles delighted to support high school football and youth athletic programs in our community. Double team on Ork, but he was able to get around it and somehow found Goslin, who misses the shot. Here comes Olsen the other way for Niles. Favors with a head of steam. And Favors will try the three over Toothman, but it's an air ball. Hurdle races out of there for Lakeshore. Carlisle was open, but passed on the shot. Here's Brendan Olsen. We might see that one coming up a little bit later on. Great job there. The steal, the slam for Brendan Olsen. Niles by 17, and that rattled the rafters here at the old Viking gym. Logan Olson almost headed to the concession stand as he takes that one, but take a look at younger brother Brendan in transition. Beautifully job. He's a wide receiver, has those good hands, intercepts the pass, and then scores the touchdown on the other end with the enthusiasm. Inbound pass to Goslin and Chambliss reaching in. Called for his third foul. Take a look at Sean Schrader. Let's answer that Ben Soft Pretzel trivia question while we have him on camera. How many Final Fours has Sean Schrader coached? Well, it's actually four. He had two in Florida before coming to Lakeshore. So that's why it's a trick question. Well-rounded career, though, for Sean, who comes in with 476 career wins. Absolutely fantastic coach when you go to four final fours in two different states. Really impressive. Hurdle can't hit the deep three and it goes out of bounds. And Niles will go back and put Williams in for Olsen and Phillips in for Chambliss. He's got a veteran Back on his staff, the old Lakeshore head coach and Jim Sanford, who 
coached Lakeshore for 17 years, then became the longtime athletic director there. His wife, Barb, passed away in 2022, decided he wanted to come back and uh, convinced the man he hired to be the Lakeshore basketball coach to bring him back and not pay him to be the volunteer <laughs> assistant coach. So good to see Jim on the side. <laughs> Meanwhile, Darius Johnson the third cannot miss. He's got nine. I tell you what, we're gonna talk about Mike Phillips and we're gonna talk about Ethan Chambliss for that electrifying, or for the Raising Canes player of the game. And if now hangs on, I think you gotta say Darius Johnson in the conversation as you see Jim Sanford there on the sideline. Probably not the evening he would like to be on camera here right now with Niles now up by 20. Been a long night for the Lancers. Really nothing has gone well for Lakeshore this evening. Just had that period, late first quarter, early second quarter where they really played well and then after that, it's been all Niles as Phillips goes inside, slicing through the defense for the bucket. Mike Phillips Jr. now leading the way for Niles with 12. And Niles looking impressive here. Spencer Gosselin on the inside with a nice up and under move. Six tonight for those 6'9 senior Gosselin. But there just have not been enough offensive contributors for Lakeshore, and they've had a terrible shooting night. Phillips was being held by Hurdle, but no call. So Phillips goes right around and for two more. Oh, he's electric. Gosselin at the other end with a finger roll. A la George Gervin. Google him, kids. Starting to look like an NBA All-Star game. Not much defense being played out there. Phillips, he's starting to heat up. I think he heard me talking about possibly giving it to somebody else. Says, no, 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 not tonight. Not tonight. Goslin now deciding to go up against the freshman Williams, but Williams gets the rebound. It's that kind of night for Lakeshore. I don't know if that one's not going to go in, what will? And meanwhile, Phillips just starting to really heat up. Logan Olson, why not? Goslin got that rebound. Surprise Phillips gave it up the way he's shooting here late in the third. Well, that's why Lakeshore came over and double teamed him. Almost forced him into that one. We've got a whistle and an illegal screen called on Lakeshore. Bo, I know I'm loud. I'm just wondering, did you hear me uh, talk about the Raising Kings play of the game? Maybe Phillips did, in fact, uh, hear me as well. He, he says no. I couldn't hear you. What'd you say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, couldn't or didn't want to. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Bo was tuning me out. Like, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, up to that point, I mean, Chambliss, I mean, he, he's the yeah. one that really has been dominating this game. But for the last three minutes, it's been nothing but Phillips. I mean, you can see why he's one of the top rated players in Michigan. Just his ability when he wants to turn on and he's got it all moving. He's got the moves. He's got that that first explosive step. And there it was again, but he couldn't get the shot. And the rebound comes to Carlisle. Well, he's human here in the third quarter. He actually didn't do that one perfectly. He missed the shot. Jared Curtis, number 31, is checked into the game now for Lakeshore. 6'3", junior. Sean Schrader trying just about any combination he can right now to try to get something cooking. Ort misses the rebound to Chambliss, and it has been all Niles tonight in the Viking gym. The Vikings playing terrific defense, getting penetration with their point guard and then able to get transition hoops with the big man, Brendan Olson, and up by 22 on 46. This edition of the 46th Game of the Week being brought to you by API St. Andrews, 31 years of success. And as Sean Schrader talks to his team about what they need to do differently, 
Bo Hunt, what has impressed you the most about this Niles squad that we've seen tonight? Well, I think it's the ability to not just one person carry this team. I think they have three, four guys that can really carry the team. But the bench play out of Johnson and Olsen really coming off the bench and giving them 13 points off the bench, majority of those here in the second half, I think those are the biggest things that really contribute to this team. When you get guys that can come in and contribute and give you minutes when you guys get uh, your stars in foul trouble, I think that's huge with this Niles team, guys. And, of course, both sideline reports brought to us by our friends at Bill's Heating. Mike Phillips with 10 of his 16 in that third quarter. So if Lakeshore was hoping to get back into the game, he was uh, starting to say, uh-uh, in that third. It was, they had gotten it back down to, what, 14 or so, and now up to 22. The Lakeshore Lancers... In danger of falling to one and five on the season, and they have that good Otsego team that we talked about earlier on the schedule for Tuesday night. So it doesn't get any easier early on here in January for Sean Schrader's team. And a five second violation called as Johnson plays great defense, and Sean Schrader wants a timeout. It's sponsored by Lakeshore Athletics. 7.27 to go, and Niles leads by 22. And this edition of the 46th Game of the Week being brought to us by our friends at Crown Trophy. They're nationally known and locally owned and hurting a little bit with some family tragedies at Crown Trophy. Yeah, it's a family-run business. Mom, dad, they're two kids that run it. Fortunately, grandma and grandpa both passing away in the last month. So uh, our prayers are with the, the family there at Crown Trophy who are outstanding individuals and really great community support so if you're in need of anything trophy wise plaques whatever it is you see it when we have our Tony Letcher Health Markets players of the game they do a great job making those plaques for us every week at week head to Crown Trophy and support them so Sean Schrader it's not his best night tonight but boy when you look at the barons of the bench in southwest Michigan Schrader and some pretty elite company there with John Eggert the state champ Jerry Schaefer and that Bridgman combo of Mike Miller and Doug Hendricks. And Sean, number five on the Southwest Michigan career wins list. And then you add in nine seasons of coaching in Florida, and he gets the 476 career wins. A 22-point lead for the Vikings, and the defense has been terrific for Miles Busby's team tonight, and they continue to create havoc for Lakeshore. An over and back called there against Niles in the transition, but Miles Busby will take that mistake any time because that came from aggressive defense. <laughs> and it was Darius Johnson, who's really played probably uh, his best game of the season here tonight with nine points. Zach Ort double teamed. Favors and Johnson creating havoc, and now we've got a reach in and a held ball called, and that'll go to Niles. Great, great work here by Niles. They are not letting up in any way, which is what you want to see. We talked about those keys to the game before the game, and uh, championship effort was what Miles Busby wanted, and, and he's getting that here tonight from his squad. Olsen inside. He got bumped on the way up, and he'll go to the line for two. Lakeshore Public Schools and the Lakeshore Athletic Department would like to thank the Lakeshore Ad Excellence Foundation for their continued support of our students and staff, your help in raising funds to support many educational opportunities both in and out of the classroom are greatly appreciated. So Brendan Olson, a 77% foul shooter on the year, misses the first. Olson, the sophomore, averaging 10 points a game, only four tonight. And Sean Schrader will continue to put in some new blood on his bench as he puts Brady Harris in to take the place of Lane Fry. Harris, a 5'11 junior. Olsen misses both, but gets his own rebound. 
And Olsen charges in and a blocking foul is called on Jared Curtis. Imagineering Finishing Technologies in South Bend, globally known as the knowledge source for metal finishing solutions. Like the teams in this game, Imagineering is always working towards a great finish. Thank you, Imagineering, for your continued support of high school sports on TV 46. And again, Lakeshore rotating some people in. Alex Toothman will check in here after the first free throw. As Brendan Olson, three-sport athlete. We've talked about his football. You've seen his basketball. He's also a pitcher and first baseman on the baseball team. Checking in for the number 33, Alex And his teammates trying to encourage him here at the foul line. Cohen Hurdle going to come into the lineup now. And he'll take the place of Owen Timmons. Lakeshore running a, a lot of different lineups here, here in the fourth quarter, trying some things out. Well, there hasn't exactly been a combination that works, and now Olsen crashes into the back of Jack Carlisle. Ben Soft Pretzels have been supporting high school athletics since 2008. They believe that sports are an important part of a well-rounded education and are proud to support the next generation of athletes. Find Ben Soft Pretzels at the University Park Mall and at most major Notre Dame athletic events. Have a pretzel day. Olsen with a couple of quick fouls there. As you see his brother Logan Olsen check in to take his place. Miles Busby having a chat with the sophomore Brendan Olson over on the sidelines. Jack Carlisle fouled, a blocking foul called there on the Vikings. This one's going to be called on Braden Favor. So the Vikes picking up some quick fouls here. I'm sure Miles Busby, while he appreciates the aggressiveness on defense, certainly does not want to put Lakeshore at the line with the clock stop multiple times here on the fourth. As Logan Olson punches that one into the stands. Neither team has scored yet here in the fourth quarter. Only 95 seconds have passed on the game clock. Feels about like 15 minutes in real time because of all the stoppages, but neither team has yet to put any points in here early in the fourth. I'll just say when the fourth quarter started, the superintendent of the Niles schools, Dan Applegate, had dark black hair. Cohen Hurdle misses, but the rebound, Toothman misses a wild shot, and here comes Niles running. Phillips put the brakes on, kicked it back outside. Taken away by Brady Harris. The scrum ensues, and Toothman comes out of there with it. Any rugby players on the floor here tonight? That's what it looked like there for a second. Perhaps having some tryouts here in the fourth. And a whistle and a foul and an offensive foul called on Lakeshore. Zach Ort called for that one. By the way, uh, very colorful, colorful shoe selection for the Niles Vikings here this evening. They got pink, they got purple, but then again, even Brady Harris getting in on it for Lakeshore. He's got, I don't know, what are those? Green, orange. That, that's Miami Vice 1987. <laughs> He's got six different colors on his sneaks. Favors working against Jack Carlisle. And things starting to get a little chippy out here as Favors is called for the offensive foul. That'll be the fourth foul on Niles here in the fourth quarter. Well, scoreboard still only shows three. And the ball thrown away by Jack Carlisle. As we whittle away seconds here in the fourth. Except for on the clock, where it really counts. Oh. Phillips recovers the handle there. Mike Phillips Jr. leading the way for Niles tonight with 16. Logan Olson for three. He has seven off the bench. And our first points of the fourth quarter from Ball either team. Tipped away by Niles and out of bounds. 
They've now doubled up the Lancers as you take a look at the replay here. Great job by Phillips, kicking it to the quarter. Phillips leading the team in assists, and you show see why there as he finds the open man. Boy, you talk about some gravy from Miles Busby tonight. It has come from his bench play, scoring 16 points. And a steal here by Logan Olson. He comes down, puts it up, couldn't hit. Chambliss the rebound, misfires. And Cohen Hurdle finally comes away with it, and then he's fouled by Logan Olson. Miles has outscored Lakeshore 32 to 9 since three minutes were left in the first half. That is indeed the fifth foul on Niles here in the fourth quarter, so that's going to send Lakeshore to the line for the last 452 of this one. The officials talking it over because the scoreboard had been erroneous. So Hurdle will go to the line. Cohen with five points tonight. You know, that's interesting because that's good work there by the officials noticing or remembering or maybe perhaps acknowledge, getting acknowledgement from the Lakeshore bench of, hey, there's been there's been an additional foul. Well, the PA announcer said five. Oh, the did. Okay. Score it just had it as five. It was only the, the scoreboard, scoreboard that operator. Didn't. Okay. That'll happen. Hurdle now with six. He's a three-sport athlete. We've mentioned him being an all-conference defensive back in football. He's also a third baseman on a very good Lakeshore baseball team that has a brand-new coach this year. Seven points for Hurdle. It's a 50-27 Niles lead. And that's the first points for Lakeshore here in the fourth quarter. Jack Carlisle scoreless in the second half for Lakeshore. After a 10-point first half. Nice dump underneath, but Johnson missed the layup. He was too close. Harris with a little skinny move and pops the three, but it won't go. Phillips the rebound, and we'll see how the last 422 of this unfolds. Favors for three. That's off the front rim, and here's Ort with the carom. Might see a whole lot of pop a shot here in the last four minutes. Harris. Now Hurdle. Niles looking to go to seven and two on the year. We mentioned the big game they have with Edwardsburg next Friday night here at the Viking Gym. Chambliss reverse layup wouldn't go. Phillips tries. Bucket in the bucket. And Mike Phillips Jr. racking up the points and the rebounds here, as you see on the 46 Sports Replay. Uh, I think it's probably fair to say he'll be talking about after the game, you think? I think you can say that now, yeah. 18 points here tonight for Mike Phillips Jr. For the Vikings, number three, Brandon Olsen, and number 21, Donovan Williams. Phillips, as you've seen, very solid all-around player. He's played very good defense tonight. He averages four assists per game. And an 85% free throw shooter on the season. 19 points here tonight. And Niles really taking Lakeshore out behind the woodshed. Toothman with the rebound that wouldn't go. Phillips thought about trying to carve the defense. Instead, Brendan Olson misses the three. And the rebound by Luke Hine. Harris outside, Hine will hoist the three. That won't go either. Johnson another rebound. You look at the basketball scene here in Southwest Michigan, and we will see a couple of really good teams on February 16th down at the Bobcat Den in Niles Township. Wasn't on that social media graphic we posted earlier this week, but it's on our website. Benton Harbor at Brandywine, and that'll be a hot ticket here in southwest Michigan. The Tigers 
having another solid year and Brandywine now at eight and one after beating Bridgman last night. That should be fun. I mean you say hot ticket and also a small gym so it's going to be a, a packed house and it's going to be tight quarters. Bo's going to have to squeeze his way in on the baseline. Speaking of big time atmospheres there will be a couple for Big Ten teams coming up. Assembly Hall in Bloomington Saturday night at eight has the Ohio State Buckeyes coming in to take on Mike Woodson's team who desperately need a win after being run out of Lincoln by Nebraska and that's where number one Purdue has to go on Tuesday night to take on Fred Hoiberg's Cornhuskers. It's Purdue trying to get the win in Lincoln against the Red Hot Husker squad Tuesday night at nine on your home for Big Ten basketball 103.1 FM. And if you're watching on the live stream Friday night well you can kick it out over to 103.1 FM. After this one is done Purdue and Illinois in a huge game in the Big Ten. First top 10 matchup at Mackey Arena in 13 years. Which is kind of crazy because Purdue's had some very good squads and Big Ten's got a lot of great teams over the years but none have matched up as top 10 opponents inside Mackey Arena over the last 13 years. And while Mackey is not an easy place to play in there are very few teams who fare as well as the fighting Illini there including last year with a win over Zach Eady and the boys. Meanwhile a bumping foul called here on Owen Timmons of Lakeshore. That's the fifth foul on the Lancers. So Mike Phillips Jr. goes back to the strike. Trying to tie his season high of 21 that he had against Pawpaw just a couple of weeks ago. Mentioned that his dad was a player here at Niles and another father son combination is over on that Niles bench. Miles Busby standing up in front of the sidelines. But his dad Mike Busby who was part of a state championship team at Buchanan back in the late 70s in his first year of helping out his son and boy has Miles really enjoyed having his dad on the bench with him this year. How cool is that. That's so great that they can have that opportunity. We saw that earlier this season with Lavelle of course Michael Edison coaching his son while also having his dad Jack as his assistant. He says it's a little different for dad. He has to remind him sometimes these are high school kids. This isn't necessarily the level of basketball you're used to watching. <laughs> As Alex Toothman steps up and hits a three pointer. The three sponsored by the Lakeshore Basketball Boosters. And those are Toothman's first points of the night. Niles has been in control of this one throughout the second half. They broke open a three point game in the second quarter went on a 16 to 2 run over a six minute spurt between the second and third quarters and really it hasn't been a challenge since then. By the way we talked earlier about the need for officials uh, both in Michigan and Indiana. How cool is it to see the story about Casey Gaynor from uh, Indiana has coached in every single officiated. As, or excuse me officiated in every single gym in the state of Indiana that is an unbelievable task that he's done over three decades as an official and according to a couple of guys we know pretty well Kyle Nedenrup from the Indianapolis Star and Don Miranda from WTHR Casey didn't really want a bunch of attention for it it was other people that kind of discovered that that had happened here's Brendan Olson <laughs> his second stop of the night <laughs> And that's the cherry on top of the Sunday for this Nile squad. Let's take a look at this replay here as another assist for Mike Phillips Jr. And Olsen one handed with the flush. Niles about to rack up one of their biggest wins in terms of scoring margin that they've ever had over the Lakeshore Lancers. As another foul is called there by Owen Timmons and you might be saying well why does Niles still have some of its starters in there. They only have eight players on the varsity roster and 
one of them, A.C. Kirkdahl, is injured. So that doesn't give them a whole lot of depth. Olson is 0 for 4 at the strike tonight and finally got one. By the way, you pointing out one of the largest margins of victory ever over Lakeshore. I mean, not that long ago, it would be unfathomable if you mentioned Niles would win by 30 points or so over Lakeshore in basketball. And that's what we're seeing here tonight. A great job by Miles Busby getting his team rolling. Three missed there by Lakeshore. Brendan Olson coming the other way, and Niles will dribble out the last 15 seconds or so of this one and raise the record to 7-2 on the year with an impressive 59-30 victory over the Lakeshore Lancers. Now stick around, everybody. We've got a lot to talk about on our St. Joe County Police Department postgame show, including our Raising Canes player of the game and our electrical workers, local 153 electrifying play of the game. It all comes your way next on the 46 Game of the Week. All right, I'm ready. I got Mike Phillips here. Standing by with our player game, Mike Phillips Jr., 21, ties your uh, uh, season high as well tonight. Yeah. Just what does this victory mean to you guys going over Lakeshore? It's a lot, man. I, we've never beat Lakeshore. And this year, you know, last year uh, we won districts and we lost one of our guards, you know. This year we're just trying to find a way to just, you know, keep pushing and come out strong every day, you know what I'm saying? You guys got off to a great start. You got a little bit of foul trouble, but you have a, a real good starting guys that really can kind of carry the load for you as well. Just talk about those other starters as well. We got a lot of energy guys who are gonna come off, you know, give give the team everything they have, man. We got defense, we got everything, athleticism. So, you know, I'm in trouble, my guys will come in and they'll help me out, yeah. Johnson and Olsen off the bench, man. What huge nights did your teammates yeah. have off the bench? They played big. Uh, Johnson came in, hit some threes, you know. Everything is rhythm with them, confidence, you know, we just got to get him better every day. And uh, Olsen, you know, every day we just keep pushing. He's, he'll be amazing later on in life, yeah. Playing for Coach Busby has got to be a treat. Just talk about playing for him. It's, it's amazing. He loves you. He'll push you every day. You got to go hard, and he'll just get on you. You know, he'll make you better at the end of the day. So that's what it's all about. Hey, congratulations. Best of luck for this season. Thank you. Back to you guys.
Thanks for watching the WHME TV 46 High School Basketball Game of the Week. Brought to you by... The feel-good song of John Denver. Thank God I'm a country boy playing through the Viking gym, and they feel very good here tonight in Niles as they beat Lakeshore by a final score of 59-30. to 30. Chuck Freeby and Angelo DiCarlo high above the fray. You come away impressed with this Niles team. Yeah, I mean, that was an electric second half, and they are very talented. They have multiple players, and it feels like they have every piece to make a deep playoff run. You know, Chambliss is an outstanding player. Mike Phillips is very good. But then you have a number of role players, including a couple guys that are emerging off the bench that could make this team a very tough team to beat come postseason time. We were told Mike Phillips Jr. is one of the best players in the state of Michigan. He was as advertised tonight. So it's no wonder he's our Raising Canes player of the game standing by now with Bo Hunt. Standing by with our player of the game, Mike Phillips Jr. 21, ties your uh, uh, season high as well tonight. Just what does this victory mean to you guys going over Lakeshore? It's a lot, man. I, we've never beat Lakeshore. And this year, you know, last year uh, we won districts and we lost one of our guards. You know, this year we're just trying to find a way to just, you know, keep pushing and come out strong every day. You know what I'm saying? You guys got off to a great start. You got a little bit of foul trouble, but you have a, a real good starting guys that really can kind of carry the load for you as well. Just talk about those other starters as well. We got a lot of energy guys who are gonna come off, you know, give give the team everything they have, man. We got defense, we got everything, athleticism. So, you know, I'm in trouble. My guys will come in and they'll help me out. Yeah. Johnson and Olsen off the bench, man. What huge nights did your teammates have off the bench? They played big. Uh, Johnson came in, hit some threes, you know. Everything is rhythm with them, confidence, you know, we just got to get them better every day. And uh, Olsen, you know, every day we just keep pushing. He's, he'll be amazing later on in life, yeah. Playing for Coach Busby has got to be a treat. Just talk about playing for him. It's, it's amazing. He loves you. He'll push you every day. You got to go hard, and he'll just get on you. You know, he'll make you better at the end of the day. So that's what it's all about. Hey, congratulations. Best luck for this season. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Bo. That's our Raising Canes player of the game. And while Mike Phillips Jr. had some electrifying drives tonight, our electrical workers electrifying play of the game provided by one of his teammates. Yeah, Brendan Olsen it really had two different plays that could have been the electrical workers electrifying play of the game. But we'll go with the first one, the steal and the slam. And later on, then had the one-handed slam. But look at the energy he had. And then when you can pick the pocket, go the opposite way and get the big slam. Emphatic way for Niles and Brendan Olson to get the victory here tonight. Tough night for the Lakeshore Lancers. They're now one and five on the year. They take on Otsego Tuesday night. Niles can't get cocky. They can't get no. sassy because Edwardsburg is coming <laughs> over here next Friday night for a big showdown in the Wolverine Conference. And that should be a fun one for the folks here in Southwest Michigan. We appreciate the hospitality up here in Niles tonight. And our TV 46 crew, who brought you this one, led by our production manager, Dean Corsmo, and our usual cast of talented men who work so hard each and every week. A reminder, college basketball comes your way on the radio Saturday night when Ohio State visits Indiana. We'll have that one for you from Assembly Hall at 8. And then our next high school basketball broadcast comes your way Tuesday night on the live stream from the Palace at Penn when Warsaw takes on the Kingsman. We'll show it to you on TV 46 Wednesday night at 9 and Thursday afternoon at 2. Don't forget to follow us on social media for all kinds of sports updates. Now for my broadcast partners, the Hall of Famer Bo Hunt and Angelo DiCarlo. It's Chuck Freeby once again the final. Niles 59, Lakeshore 30. So long from the city of Four Flags.